I think there's a lot of support for both pieces of legislation. One that I introduced along with Chairman McCall back uh, early this year that has not yet succeeded in getting the 218 votes. The second one uh, is often referred to now as good lad number two that bill is um, something we put together with members from all the corners of our conference working closely together uh, and i think it has the prospect of getting to 218 there's a lot of questions uh, mm -hmm. that we're having to answer uh, some concerns that need to be addressed but i think uh, we should have a good vote tomorrow what is different about the second one that makes it more likely and how did you get more people from the corners of the party and what did you change well, we did uh, more in terms of uh, addressing the DACA population, not in terms of expanding that population, but the original folks who were entitled to apply under the Obama administration, they will all get to apply, not just the ones who actually signed up. And uh, we create a new merit-based immigration category that people who are lawfully president of the United States can apply for, but also people who qualify for DACA will, after five years, be able to qualify as well. The criticism from the left is that the, the plan and the president's plan included is to limit the amount, lower the number of uh, immigrants that can come here legally. How do you respond to that? Uh, in uh, the, the new consensus bill, there is no net reduction uh, in green cards because the savings we have from the visa lottery, for example, that goes into the new uh, merit-based immigration system and the savings from eliminating some of the extended family chain migration categories, that goes into working down the waiting list uh, for the employment-based categories that we already have. As you know, people from some countries like India yeah. can wait 20 years or more, even though they've legally qualified for a green card. We're going to drastically shorten those waiting lists. Now, once that is taken care of, mm -hmm. uh, then numbers could go down. But I think this is just a okay. down payment on moving toward a merit-based system overall. Let me ask you, because obviously the visual is all around what's going on at the border right now. And when you look at the numbers and you see that 10,000 kids are in custody right now who were sent here not with their parents for a parent to think that that's the best option for their child to hand them over to a stranger and try and get them into another country they have to be in a pretty desperate situation how, how do you address that problem both the, the idea that they don't feel like they can legally immigrate and they're in that kind of jeopardy or danger and the idea that we have those 10,000 kids who are here now who, without families Parents who do that are totally irresponsible. Parents who bring their children with them and come across the desert or across the Rio Grande River, uh, subjecting themselves to human smugglers traveling a thousand miles across Mexico, they're irresponsible too. But we also agree that if the charge against the parent is simply uh, uh, illegal entry in the United States, which is a misdemeanor, we think their children should be kept with them while they're waiting uh, for that charge to be heard. But what about at the source? I mean, what do you do about the problem that they feel like they don't have the opportunity to migrate legally because it takes so long because no one's listening? How do you solve that part of the equation? Or do you feel like that's not your responsibility? Well, the United States is the most generous country in the world for legal immigration. We give over 1.1 million green cards a year to people to come and live here permanently. And it doesn't surprise me that tens of millions more people want to come. They just can't all come. Uh, it's got to be a two-way street. So some people need to know that they need to stay in their own country. We need to provide help to resolve some of the problems that they have there. But our asylum system is being abused. Our catch, the catch and release problem we have is addressed in this legislation as well. Okay. And unaccompanied minors, like you just referred to, they come, uh, if they're come from, coming from Mexico, they can be returned safely home home immediately, whereas if they're coming from Central America, we have to go through a much longer yeah. process. That's why they're being detained. We need to change that law as well. Okay. Uh, and that's also included in this bill. Back to work. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank your you. time.